Hello, 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 everybody. Welcome. It's another episode of DOD 45. I am Ty of Art by Ty, and our guest today is the one and only DJ Hoppa. DJ Hoppa. Yeah, this that God flow. I'm getting on my Pablo. Got that five combo. Turn these niggas John Doe. Oh, yeah, real, this was our currency. Did not be Jeff Bezos and your favorite famous rapper work HR for my payroll. And I still don't know if I'd have enough wealth to save the day, though. Cause it seemed like everyone that they be digging is a a hole. <laughs> Shit. Think they might it's, a, it's really awesome of him to join us um, on this episode of Drawing Over Discussions. Cause he's a busy dude. Time is currency. In the show today, we have a compelling conversation about structured schedules and the importance of being home with his lady and toddler. We talk about the Hoppa and Friends albums, his upcoming tours, and his label Broken Complex Records. We also get into the influence his mom had on him, witnessing her passion for her own music regardless of the income she was making from it. If you're not aware of DJ Hoppa, I will let that slide for now, but you need to kick off your shoes and open your ears, cause we're gonna hip you to him. Time out, time out. If I could go back to all of my past mistakes, I would just smash the brakes, you live and you learn and burn If that's the case, then this is the moment that I climb from the casket And I rise through the ashes, and I find in the passion Cause my time is a passion, no time soon, even though I'm bruised I'm trying to reach greatness, and I hope I It's such a pleasure to have him on our show today He's worked with all the greats, and there's a reason for that He's just badass And before it starts to sound too much like I'm kissing his ass Let's just get into it DJ Hoppa, welcome to DOD45 Thanks for joining us today Oh, thanks for having me. How are you doing? How have things been for you? Um, things have been things have been hectic, man. Like uh, I just got back on the road, did like some shows, and uh, the day I came, I was gone for like a week. I just got back from this week run doing shows, and I was like, all right, it's Thursday, family day. Let's just chill all day at the crib. And man, little man grabbed the chair and like pulled it down. It got him right here. We had to fucking go to the emergency room. Dude, it's a nightmare. So I'm still like shell shocked and traumatized. This happened Thursday. And I think like every other fucking thought I have is like about what happened. I'm looking at my kid and I'm like, oh dude, is he gonna have a scar? Is it gonna be, cause it's like right above his eyebrow. And I have one through my eyebrow, which is crazy. Like I'm like, dude. And I, I got mine when I was two years old. So it's just like trippy as hell that that happened. But uh. I need, I need someone to talk to about Sure, yeah. Well, two things on that real quick. Um, yeah. One, the scar. I mean, listen, I'm one of the ones, like, when Criss Cross was big, I was, like, shaving two, two little things in my eyebrows. <laughs> right, like, right. Every once in a while, I still do it. I don't know why. Right. I mean, I'm 44 years old, and I'm, like, I, I find myself just doing two little notches. Do the eyebrow eyebrow. Line tonight, man. <laughs> well, he's already got that, so you didn't have to worry about that. Yeah, he's got a story and shit, so. Was that, is this your first child, then? It's my first kid, yeah, oh, for man, sure. Yeah, and, oh, uh, cool. Do you have any kids? Yeah, we have we have two kids, and we have a okay. similar thing. Our kid fell out of a tree when he was how old was he, Adrian? He was about two. He was about two, oh, and he God. landed on a rock, and like it put a huge dent in his head, and we had to take him to the emergency room. And yeah, those, dude. those moments are scary, man. They're those gnarly. moments are like, oh my God, dude. They're just like they stay with you they're traumatic yeah like so like i and i've been through all kinds of crazy shit my whole life you know like all kinds of shit but when it's it's your job to keep them safe right so if they're not safe they're in that moment of not being safe you're just like torn up so you had to get stitches yeah but um they did like inside stitches that dissolve and then they put glue over it okay so like i guess in it just all is going to heal in like 10 days but i'm just yeah i'm just hoping you know like the doctor's like, oh, he's going to be cool by prom, you know? And I was like, fuck, man, that's in like 15 years, bro. <laughs> like, um, all right. Well, could I, well, I guess. That's how I've been. So, yeah. yeah that's, that's I, oh, I did want to ask one other thing. Was that, is that your first, um, like, how were you, when you went out and played shows, was it like a, kind of like a tour or did you just go out and play a show that night or? So, like, um, I DJ for an artist named Dizzy Wright and like, uh. I've been DJing for him for like 10 years and um, we're getting ready to do a tour and we just are booking a few like one-offs. This was three shows, Salt Lake City, Idaho Falls and Boise. And then like next week we have two shows in Seattle and then we go on tour. So we're kind of, they're like little warm-up shows yeah, to like, yeah. we're bringing a drummer and stuff like that. So we just did three shows 
in uh, Salt Lake in Idaho. And you'll be good away from being a, a, will you'll be going out on, you know, not taking the family with you. You'll be good with that. Or will that be hard? Well, this was, yeah. So that was my week away from the fam. And like, that was like, that was perfect. Like as far as right when I was really feeling it, I was going home, you know, like yeah. after a week, I was like, man, I miss this kid. And you know, my lady's telling me that he's like, daddy, he's always saying daddy and shit. That's just like getting me, you know? So yeah. Um, this run is going to be three weeks, which to me is short. I normally do like anywhere from a month to like two and a half month runs. Yeah. And I haven't toured for like two years now, you know, almost like, so I'm like, part of me really wants to do it because it's just a part of who I am. And then part of me is like, damn, this is going to be challenging, you know, but three weeks I think will be cool. I yeah. think, uh, it's not too long, you know, so. Were those little one-offs that you did, um, were they purposely kind of set to get your feet wet again? Because, tor- like, not being on the road for a while, it's hard to, like, yeah. get into that. Yeah, um, I th- I don't think, like, it was, like, I- it just fell into place that way, yeah. you know? Oh, I think okay. they kind of were spaced out, like, and then it was a perfect way for us to, like, yeah, they're, like, rehearsal shows for when we go on the tour. Well, all right, man. I'm glad that uh, your son's all right. Uh, I'm glad yeah. that uh, things Thank are working, you. uh, getting back into getting out of the shows because that uh, staying at home was kind of hard. It was nice to know, like, wow, I can survive without going out on the road. But yeah, I did kind of like I got into something new, too. Like I set up a um, a studio, you know, because like, yeah, I had a, I had my son at home and then COVID and everything had us just locked down. And I was like realizing I can't really juggle the two because like I'd be in there working on music and then he'd knock on the door and I'd be like, all right, let's go hang out, you know, and I'd hang out with him all day. And then uh, and then I'd be like really into the music. And, then you know, so I was like, I need a space to like actually work and stuff. So like I spent a lot of time like uh, getting like some money together and then opening up a studio in North Hollywood. So now I treat it like a 40 hour work week job, which is crazy. It's all come full cycle because it's like my whole life was like fuck that structure i don't want i don't want to work eight hours a day 40 hours a week that sounds terrible you know what i mean like i was like my whole childhood was escaping that and like even like dropping out of school and doing the ged and i'd have a job where i convinced my boss to like let me take two days off to work from home or whatever it was and then now i've like created my own exact you created thing. what you were trying to avoid <laughs> my whole life 40 yeah so i'm here eight hours a day five days a week just grinding you know like but it's like i love it you know and, yeah. it, and it gives me balance and then i can go home and disconnect you know where yeah. my whole life i never really disconnected i was just always on or whatever so yeah sometimes it's nice to get that uh, that that uh, disconnect or that reset yeah for sure all right. Well, here we go. I just set the timer for 45 minutes and then um, I'll get started on this drawing. Oh, yeah. Well, I guess I already got to it. You are about to go on tour, right? Yes. And how long of a tour is that one that going to be? That's three weeks. OK. So what are you focusing most of your energy on right now? Right now is is my son and uh, and the studio and the label. Um, I kind of created a lot of like work for myself with uh with the COVID shit being home, I was like, all right, the record label, you know, we've been a label for so long, but I really want to get into this consistent release schedule. So I was like, every fucking week, every Friday, we're going to drop new music. And um, there's five artists on the label and everybody was down, but it's just, it, it turned into like a laundry list of like things that had to be done every week. You know, it's just never ending work. And then luckily I got a cool team and I've been able to like, delegate some stuff out and and get it going but yeah we're like 32 releases in or something like that we haven't missed a week yet and uh we're just trying to like stay consistent and that's been major like when i'm here that's like a big thing and then uh we hired an engineer to do all like the the outside sessions like if somebody needs to book the studio and stuff so it's kind of just like been taking a lot of the time yeah being able to come up with all that and do all that i mean that's I'm guessing a direct result from the whole COVID and kind of being stuck at home, trying to figure out what's the, what's the next move. What's the hustle if something like this happens again. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Cause like, I mean, before I would just be at my house, um, you know, working on music or we had like a little studio um, in a house. We had a little studio in a garage forever, but uh, the homie had to sell that house. So then we were in storage for like a year and a half before COVID. And I was just working, making beats out of my house and touring a lot. And I was touring so much that I was like, ah, whatever. The studio is not really that big of a deal because I'm touring so much. And then, yeah, COVID hit. 
And then my son was born and I was like, shit, I need a studio. I need a spot to like be loud and um, make music, you know, so. Yeah, you can't be making, yeah, when the kid's trying to sleep, man, forget about it. You ain't trying to make any noise. <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. <laughs> well, here, let me, let me hit you with this Sophie's Choice question right here. Yo, yo, ma or yo, ma? Oh, shit. You know what's crazy? That's fucking so crazy is my mom is a cellist. Yeah, that's what I mean. Your mom. So yo, yeah. yo, ma or your mom? My mom all day. <laughs> <laughs> so she was a cellist. Your dad was a trumpet player, right? Yeah, yeah. Were you influenced by like by that kind of by that music at all when you were growing up? The cello, 100%. My dad also was like, by the time I was born and young, um, my dad was like a contractor. He was like painting and doing stuff to like, that was like family business, making money. But my mom has never had a real job in her life. Like she's only played the cello and that's taken her so many places. And, um, and I listened to tons of classical growing up. You know, she always like forced the classical in the car anytime, you know, like at home, she would practice like three hours a day. So major influence but your dad did it like he wasn't he just kind of didn't play music anymore or he would still kind of just on the side he would he would play on the side but yeah. not not as like uh like i don't have memories of it like i do of my mom playing right. like my mom to this day you know she still plays my dad passed when i was young so like he played a little bit and then uh he was like also a missionary like priest and like had a bunch of wild stuff but i what i remember him doing a lot was like writing he had like a old school word processor with like a blue screen basic you know late yeah. 80s thing and like yeah he'd do a lot of writing and he had the trumpets in the room and he'd play a little bit but my mom was like every single day playing for hours well she was kind of making a living off of that i mean yeah like you said so was that something that kind of growing up with that knowing that you can make a living through music was that do you think that played into you realizing like you know what i'm gonna just make do the music gig yeah for sure and my mom like you know she never like balled off cello you know she was right, never right, like right. making a lot of money she that she had a lot of rough patches where um she didn't have any students or any gigs or stuff like that because um you know she would teach and that would do well and then it just go in like phases you know she'd have a group mm -hmm. of students and then she wouldn't she'd only have like one or two and uh but like her passion was infectious, you know, like that's yeah. what she lived for. And that's, I could see like, oh shit, she's perfectly happy with, you know, her expression, you know, and that's super cool. Like I saw that fulfillment that she had and was like, you don't need that much to be happy, you know? Yeah. And also not, you know, not like just thinking of it, like seeing that she, yeah, that she was able to survive, even though it wasn't like mad money like you said but like just seeing like oh she's able to survive and she's doing what she loves like oh man i can i mean that's usually something that keeps people away from trying to jump out you know like there are a lot of people that want to be artists or musicians but no one you know no one doesn't feel comfortable enough to like go for it but i think growing up around that and seeing like everything was just we worked everything worked out just fine and my yeah. mom was able to make the music so that must have been man that's yeah you could attribute a lot to that that's that's pretty awesome i'm glad to hear yeah. that you know, you said your dad passed when you were younger, but mm -hmm. would he, um, if he had this Sophie's choice, would he go, where would he go? Um, Dizzy Gillespie or Dizzy Wright? <laughs> nah. <laughs> if you said, if you said my dad, he, he would definitely go with Dizzy Gillespie. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I think he'd pass on the hip hop probably. I think, uh, he was an older head. So like, uh, is your mom into the hip hop? My mom is definitely into her kids and we loved hip-hop growing up my sister right. loved hip-hop and um you know my mom will hear some beats and and she'll comment on like if a beat is very musical or orchestral or something she'll she'll dig it have you got her in to uh, record anything like, on anything i've i've sampled her like um awesome. yeah and i've done some recording of her but i haven't brought her into this studio yet which i definitely have to do soon have yeah, a session awesome. where like yeah and just have her play a bunch of stuff so let's let's go run through this hypothetical real quick so you're bored in a spaceship right and uh, you can only take one thing to share with alien life form that you can take with you to prove to the aliens how dope we are as humans you can choose one of these two things tech 12s or pioneers plx 1000 <laughs> <laughs> the tech 12s <laughs> all day <laughs> tried and true man yeah i have a pair of plx's but um i i actually have the gold plx's but uh i just saw those yesterday when i was looking up but because i it's been a while since i've like really looked at gear but i yeah. saw those you got those gold ones 
I bought the, it was like when I was like touring so much and I had a, you know, my tech 12s are super old, you know, like, um, right. and uh, they're like the MK ones, like, or some, something like that. And then PLX, they had the whole bundle with the pioneer mixer, the DJ MS nine, and they only made 500 of them and they were numbered and stuff. And I was like, treat yourself, man. Yeah. I was like, that's what I love. I'm gonna get some nice turntables and those are at home. I keep those in my house and stuff. Well, but, so uh, stay, staying on this, um, on this whole scenario that I've put together, um, yeah. uh, which albums do you offer them? So you can also, this is for the alien life form. Out right. Of, out of, which albums do you offer out of Diggable's Reach In or Blowout Comb? Reach In for sure. I love Blowout Comb too, but Reach In for some reason just like was the one that got me. It's the same thing with like Far Side and uh, Bizarre Ride and Lab Cabin. That was gonna be my next one if you could if you could give them Bizarre Ride or Lab Cabin. It would be Bizarre Ride for sure. Like yeah, Bizarre Ride is my jam for sure. Like um, something about like just the first records get me. You know, like uh, like I just follow ups are amazing, but I just love like debuts, man. Like yeah, re. And those are like my two favorite hip hop records, right? There. Well, don't you think everybody in the world, no matter what music they listen to, should have Bizarre Ride like in yeah. there somewhere? Like, oh my God. Yeah. It's such a such a great record. It's almost like a kid's record too. You know what I mean? Because it's so like sing along, fun and stuff. Like so staying still staying with this, you can mm-hmm. only tell them about one Wu Tang clan member. Who will it be? Oh, that's one Wu Tang Clan member. Ah, I mean, <laughs> Meth is so dope, but Jizza, the genius. You know what I mean? He might be the one. It might be. It might be the Jizza. Yeah, I don't think you. I don't think you're wrong with that. Yeah, he might yeah. interpret. He might take it in the best. <laughs> yeah, he might. Yeah, he, and then from there, I mean, if if we're assuming that aliens have. Um, are, are uh, you know, smarter than we are, they're going to figure out a way to hear the rest of the Wu-Tang just based off of what they got the gene off the genius. Exactly. <laughs> they'll create, they'll get all the info and like infuse it and create like some kind of sub Wu-Tang clan <laughs> species. Did you have a favorite cartoon when you were growing up? Um, Like Simpsons and shit, or you mean like even uh, like yeah. younger than that? Younger, like, yeah, younger. Shit, what did we watch a lot of like I'm just thinking of like after school cartoons yeah. would be like like Darkwing Duck or oh Batman animated series was so fire. Um oh. I'm trying to think what else like I really watched as a kid like cartoons, but I think of like yeah, like Tiny Toons stuff or Animaniacs was like after school stuff. Was G.I. Joe gone by the by the time you were No, G.I. Joe, yeah, we fuck yeah. with G.I. Joe and Ninja Turtles, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Ninja Turtles was my jam when I was like eight or nine. What project that you did? What was the project that um, gave you like your, your your big exposure like at the beginning? Really, no project. <laughs> I'm has like, it been a, has it, like was there it's one, been like, like a very grow? slow ride. I, I would yeah. say like the biggest jump. You know, me and Gavlin dropped a song on YouTube that got to like a million views in less than a month. Oh, yes, I feel so certain. Ten years plus, hit him, clap behind the curtain. The champagne toast for the friends and the foes who be dropping like flies. Really, I don't demise for the. Don't sympathize for him, y'all big and silly. I'm a cool, calm, real bitch, keep it illy. Eating chicken parmesan in my classics. I'm the type to be drawn to what's massive. Break your demographic, I've been through the drastic. See, y'all try to test me, I progress the fastest. They plan. And so that was like probably the biggest, like, moment, growth moment of a song. And that song's like now at almost like 8 million. And, um,. Getting getting signed to Funk Volume and tour, really touring, getting in front of a lot of people at a lot of shows was was everything. That's where I saw like social media numbers just go up and everything was from touring. And we did a lot of it, you know, we toured for years and years. But, uh, and also this was like before that algorithm kicked in on like Facebook and Instagram, yeah. we would have posts that would have like 100,000 shares. We would have post like I would post something and it would anybody, you know, that followed me, if I had like sixty thousand followers, they all saw it. It'd have like, you know, four thousand comments and like crazy numbers. And now it's like that same post will have like thirty comments and I have like five times as many yeah, followers is, now. Isn't that fucking frustrating when you have like 
you you've got you know you're in the hundreds of thousands of followers and like you post something and then like maybe like you see like there were 61 views or something you're like, right what? yeah they just oh, realized like oh sense. like they're like people are living off off at marketing themselves through our platform so we have to like you know make money off that now yeah. they just figured out how to limit that and then yeah it sucks because like every artist i know you know no matter what like uh that's like really really trying to grow their brand they have to throw money into advertising or else they'll just plateau you know they're like yep. and you know i don't throw money really much money into advertising but some stuff like i have to consider like certain projects and stuff because they're just limiting you you know well and then these days like really where where is that where do you go? You know, I remember the days when you, you know, when there's a show and you take a flyer, you know, like you're plastic right. cars with flyers and shit. Yeah. Like, oh yeah. <laughs> Going to Kinko's and I had a seat. I was burning CDs early on in my career and, you know, putting labels on them. And what the hell is that now? Yeah, it's so irrelevant now. Where is it now? How do you get word to people? It's all social media problems. It's all, yeah. And it's all the net, you know, it's like now it's TikTok, you know? So it's like, oh. and then soon you have a TikTok page. Talking. You have two posts on there. Yeah. <laughs> I think I'm one is my son, maybe like, I don't know. I, your son. I still don't know how to use it. You know, it's like it my lady your son and not even one of your songs. I don't right. think <laughs> I'm terrible at this, you know, like, uh, that's, that's showing my age right there. Like if you look at my two posts on TikTok, is that something that you'll get into or you or probably not, you know, it's something I should get into. Uh, but I really I hate it now. Like, uh, yeah. you know, when I'm on tour and it's just, and I'm like bored and on a bus for hours, yeah. social media is okay. You know, it's like, I'll, I'll be way more active on it. But when I'm home with my fam and stuff, it's like, I just don't want to do any of that stuff or I just want to work on music and yeah. not be as caught up in the social media. I'm just like, not as, it's not that satisfying. You know what right. I mean? Like, yeah. yeah. I know exactly what you're talking about. We, our normal life is we're on the road about eight to nine months out of the year. So Right on. Uh, yeah, on. But it seems like when we're on the road, that's when I usually. I mean, I have to at least post something once a day on my social media just to keep my my followers and, and collectors happy. But mm -hmm. other than that, like just kind of getting on there, never on there. But when we're on the road, I just I don't know for some reason like just sitting at a hotel or something. You're kind of like, oh, I guess I'll check out what's happening. Yeah, so, this so. is the thing to do. Update people <laughs> and like, yeah, it's like writing in your journal at that point. You know, yeah. it's like yeah, mine us or Minecraft. Oh shit! <laughs> I'll go mine us. Do you, Minecraft, I, I, that's even beyond me. My nephew plays that, but I'm like, what is this? What you guys have reverted back to blocks and what is this? We wanted good graphics our whole life, and now you're playing freaking this weird bootleg-looking <laughs> game. But I know my kids got into it. It's actually but you can be super fun. creative in it, right? Yeah, yeah, it's like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So it's like I get it. Are you a gamer? Yeah. Do you like do you play games and stuff or? I I try. Uh, my group of friends definitely they play a good solid two to three hours a night like the guys i grew oh, up with you know because yeah. they all yeah they'll just they work their jobs they go home they play some video games you know and like i try to play with them as as often as possible but now with my son i don't he doesn't ever see me play the game right like uh, so i don't play in front of him he doesn't have the ipads yet i don't know why we're, we're just like he's like not even two years old yet so we're just yeah. trying to like limit it and uh so I only play when he's like asleep and then usually that's only like 30 minutes or something a night, you know, if I can get it in. I used to think when I, my kids were young, I, I was always looking forward to the day. I can't wait till they're old enough. They could play these games with me, but I can't play games anymore. Like I'll start playing. And I'll be like, man, I should be drawing or like, I should be doing something that's like, yeah, yeah. You get that <laughs> feeling of like, this isn't, this isn't right. This is yeah. not spend my time. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah. That's being like a cell, you know, being a DIY, like we can't, you know, any, all the time that we have, that's all always work time. It seems like, yeah. That's why I, even though you're saying like you've built something for yourself that you were kind of getting away from, it's actually good to put a structure like that in place because yeah really with, with our in business like what we do like you know i'm talking when i'm talking about we being diy right we, we're always on always working constantly yeah so that's a uh, that's probably going to work out good for you this is the first time right this is the first time you've ever done any put any structure to your yeah exactly like set some boundaries and like some the schedule is way more structured everything's way more structured it's like it's stressful but it is like it's better because we we just are starting to figure it out it gets easier and easier i think things get put into place and then it's like then we feel good about it because we're like all right we're doing stuff every week because i mean 
I can look back at certain years where I'm like, oh, Broken Complex put out like three songs this year or something right. in a whole year. Like, what do we do? You know what I mean? So it's like, this is kind of like, just lights a fire under our ass to make sure that we're active and we're doing, like you said, you post a photo every day to keep your, your people happy and stuff, like make sure they're still engaging. I know personally, I get, I have this weird fear that like, if I'm not in, if I'm not in people's faces, I become irrelevant. Do you have right. that? Do you worry about that? Kind of. And kind of like, I just know, like, as long as I keep doing my stuff, like I should get back on the road. I just feel like as long as I stay on the road, once that, that kind of keeps me like relevant in my own head, you know, enough, but the social media, like, I don't really feel it as much, but I should right now. Currently, like my social media followers have been hovering at the same level for like a while. I'm not trending upwards. And that's probably because I'm not taking like, taking it as serious as I should be. It would be dope to be able to just hire somebody to handle that shit for you, right? Yeah, right? Like, yeah, an assistant would be the shit, but... Uh... Do you ever talk to Minus? I, I mean, I every once in a while, like, I'll get a random mess. See, I met him in Austin, Texas, 20-something years ago. He just came into my... No, it wasn't 20 years ago. Maybe... <laughs> I mean, it was a long time. It was like 12 years ago. He just came into my booth and he was like, hey, bro. And he, and he just kind of came at me and gave me a whole, like, gave me like six CDs. He's like, check out my music. <laughs> and he's, but ever since then, like, that was our first interaction. And right. then ever since then, I, like, I would just get a random call from him. And yeah. we, we would kind of go back and forth on Facebook. But I was just wondering if you still talk to him or. Yeah, I talk to him. I talk to him not not like crazy often here and there and stuff. Like we check up on each other, and uh, you know we're always talking about going up to this cabin um, to like make make an album in the woods type thing. You know what I mean? Like that's what he wants to do. So is he still rapping then? Because I really have. He's not at all on social media. <laughs> no, he's not on social media, and he's not. I I think he's still writing for sure, but I don't think he's been actively like recording and releasing music like. Um, He's been, uh, I think he's in New Mexico right now. Cause you did three Arizona. albums with him, right? Or something like yeah. that? Yeah, yeah, we did three albums. Everyone show yo love your way, we're good, everything is A-okay, say I'ma make it through another day, you gon' make it through another day, we don't give a fuck, we're gonna make it. Yeah, he's like one of the first MCs that like, I really like, hit the road with. We actually went on tour with AWOL 1 in uh, like 2007 or 2006. AWOL 1 and Josh Martinez. Bro, when and, you guys were on that tour, sorry, yeah. I didn't mean to interrupt you, but it was my birthday. It was in July. Mom yeah. had a birthday party at my house, and I, I've, I've been a huge AWOL 1 fan forever. Yes. And, uh, um, the best, dude. and mine is told, he like messaged me. He's like, yo, we're in Salt Lake City, bro, and I'm and we're going to come to your birthday party. And I was so stoked. I mean, it didn't make it because it was a late show, but yeah, I mean, but I totally remember that. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Yeah, that tour was that tour was wild. That was eye opening. That's like I quit my job to go on that tour, and like that was you know my first tour and shit. Um, yeah, so we did three records, and like yeah, he's the first MC I really cut my teeth with, like just getting getting down to business, hitting the road, and like working on albums and stuff like that. He, so he was the first one that you did any touring, any touring or anything. Yeah, I did my first tour DJing uh, for him, and I did a lot of shows with him. We used to play a bunch of shows, like local, you know, bar gigs and stuff like that. Is that how you guys hooked up? Uh, Were you friends before that, or did you hook up from like what? Someone, um, a a jungle DJ, we knew. We had a mutual friend who was like a junglist. His name was Frantech, but uh. He introduced us because I was DJing at that time and he was just like, oh, and making beats. And he's like, oh, this guy makes beats. This guy raps. You guys should hang out. And we hung out and made rap music. Well, you guys made dope, dope music together. And, and I'll be, you know, 100 percent honest that I discovered you through Minus. So, oh, that's cool. Yeah. From oh, him yeah. cop passing out. Yeah. Texas, yeah. Austin, he, Texas. He, <laughs> yeah. That's dope. <laughs> How about this? Uh, Sophie's Choice. Uh, Khalifa Kush or Friday Kush? Khalifa Kush or Friday? Friday Kush is the brand new one, right? That's, That's Ice Cube. Ice Cube, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I haven't had the Friday Kush yet, but I think I'm gonna go. I, I think I'm gonna go West Coast with Cube. Yo, uh, I don't know though. Wiz is the Wiz is the Wiz smokes. Wiz knows good weed. You know what I mean? So he wouldn't put his name behind the bullshit. I've smoked the KK. It's bomb. Ah, <sighs> That's tough. <laughs> I, I'm gonna switch back to Khalifa Kush because okay. I just know it's good. Yeah, I because you can good. you can give Ice Cube's uh, time to to give that before, and then next time someone asks you that Sophie's choice, you can go with the yeah, <laughs> the thing. All right. 
Uh, so you're you are approaching 40. Um, um, are you feeling any aches and pains yet? I'm approaching 39. Uh, <laughs> in a while from now. Yeah, hell yeah, man. This is all this is when it all starts really kicking your ass, like right around this time. Up until like 36, I was still feeling 19 years old. Yeah. And then uh, when I hit 37, I started feeling 45. This shit just completely reversed on me. Do you carry a lot of gear when you're when you're out on the tour? When I, you know what? My backpack weighs like 30 pounds in the airport, <laughs> but it's usually just in the airport. I'm not like doing a lot of lugging. I don't have to lug like um, turntables and stuff anymore. Right. Like cause that'll be that'll be at the gig, usually set up by the sound crew. So like I'll just show up with the laptop and be cool. You know what I mean? Like, um, but when in the airport, I have to sometimes bring two computers, my machine um you know and my controller and stuff and i'm in there kind of hobbling and shit i gotta get a setup on wheels but i mean i think i still got a few years of touring before i feel like it's like too much for me maybe like i'm done crowd surfing i, I don't know if i'm gonna do any front flips into the crowd or anything like that <laughs> was there something you like to do yeah we would for for like a few tours we crowd surfed every single night and i'd be like Check out this bruise, you know, on my back would be like a huge bruise this big. I think somebody punched me in the ribs. Like, but uh, lately haven't been crowd surfing. And after this two year break, I'm not really like dying to do it. Yeah. Well, you know, I interviewed um, or I had a discussion with Ron Allen. He was a skater for H Street. And he's 58 years old and he still goes out and skates every day. And Hardcore. ever since that discussion with him, I've been like, you know, what? I'm not going to settle with I'm older now, so I can't do it. Cause I was starting right. to get into that mode. I was starting to be like, oh, cause I kept getting injured on my runs and stuff. And I was like, fuck, I'm just old. This sucks. And I started getting all bummed out on it, but I've made a no uh, mental note to not let that happen. So I'm giving that advice to you. Don't let that happen. <laughs> okay. You know, this, this is the thing I have like, yeah, I have a dirt bike. I went and uh, it was like stored in my cabin forever for years. And I just pulled it out cause it was COVID. I was bored. I was like, let me go get this dirt bike, fix it all up. It's all ready to go. And then, uh, I seen one of my buddies who went like wakeboarding and broke his leg. He was like, man, I can't do the shit I, I used to do. You know, like he was saying that exact shit. He's like, I'm getting old, bro. And uh, he's like, my body's not the same. And then I just like had a flash image of me on my dirt bike, like laying on the floor, like, oh, I'm old, you know, like I can't do this. So I was like, fuck, maybe I shouldn't ride this thing, you know? Like, but... well, what I have discovered is you can't just, you, you can still do all the things. Like you can ride your bike. You just can't fucking launch off of big ass right. Johnson. <laughs> right. Yeah. You got to just do everything like with some concern. With yeah. some... <laughs> <laughs> Unless you are like professional, like Tony Hawk's out there still throwing big shit. So I guess right. But he's all, you know, he's still, I'm sure like still taking it super cautious and yeah, yeah you, he, we never see footage of him. I guarantee, like after a long day's ride, like he's iced, like he's back at home with like ice right. packs on all, oh, yeah. all joints. <laughs> in the ice bath, just like oh, for sure. Um, hey, hey, bucket hat or beret? I'm gonna go bucket hat. Did you ever? Did you ever used to rock a bucket hat? I'll, I, if I go camping, I will rock a bucket hat for its function of keeping the sun. You know what I mean? Off yeah. my face, like, or if I'm like fishing or at the lake. Bucket hats are dope. I always, I always thought they look cool. Yeah, you do have to think about, uh, yeah, for the sun. My wife wears a, um, <laughs> sorry to throw you under the bus, Adrian, but yeah. she wears a, um, uh, a Carmen San Diego hat when we're out in the sun. <laughs> nice. Oh yeah. <laughs> and, uh, or like the big straw hats are cool too. I'm down with those. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. You hear stories about people getting their skin cancer burned off and then you're like i i can put a hat on yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, hey what is the what's the trick to like avoid the sweat ring on hats dude because i hate that shit oh man i think just fucking have a lot of hats yeah because <laughs> <laughs> it never, washes never out, comes right? out yeah, it never comes out no matter what you do did you ever have did you ever have one of those wire the white remember the wire hat cleaners that you could put it you could put the hat in there and put it in the I never I, I never thought those would work. You put them in like the dishwasher, right? Yeah, yep. that's gross. But that's they don't wild, it, yeah. it doesn't matter they don't work. We Yeah, cuz then your hat has this like wrinkled like texture to it. You can't iron a hat, you know? They're just like yeah. Are you a, are you a hat guy? Like are you in that big time? I like we make hats for like a like I that's like one of my merch items is like a snapback hat and then so I always have like a semi fresh one like i'll wear it for a couple weeks and then you know they don't cost much to make when you make them yourself and then i'll just put another one on are you sensitive to the fit of a hat like i mean because like if it's too big if it's got that big thing i hate that if it yeah yeah i like 
Well, wearing them backwards, not really, but forward for sure. Like the fit has to be very perfect for me to be able to wear it like forwards. But usually, I like this is a trucker hat, and I just throw it on backwards. Like fuck it, you know what I mean? Yeah. When you got when you were deciding on doing your merch, though, was that something that you were like, yeah, I want to make sure. Yeah, it had to be wool. It had to be like the wool acrylic blend. It couldn't be like the, it, like it has to be a certain thickness. Yeah, I'm like super picky with the hats in that sense. Actually, there are. Yeah, a few and it's hard like, to find a good. That's why I hate that when like when you get that sweat ring. I hate it because like, uh, it's hard to. At least for me, I'm very particular about how a hat fits. I like, right. I, you know, I like the flat brim, but not too much because then I feel like that forty year old trying to look like I'm a young kid again. Right. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Is the is the stick leaving the sticker on still a thing or is that is that gone? <laughs> I don't know. I think I think probably not a thing. I okay. don't know. I don't know. But no, I never I, I always took the sticker off. Like I always took the sticker off because then like eventually that shit's just going to look fucked up and then it comes off and it's discolored. Well, it's a fade. Yeah. I yeah, know. yeah, exactly. <laughs> Dude, you don't want that. That's going to ruin it, you know, like you're done after that. Um, uh, Q-tip or Q-bert? Oh shit! Um, damn. <laughs> both, both, both legends, dude. Fucking, um, both huge inspirations. I'm gonna go Q Bert, uh, cause he is like an alien. Oh word, yeah, that's awesome too. Cause I know how much. I mean, I, I'm pretty sure you're a huge uh, tribe called Quest man too. So. Oh yeah, no, Q Tip is the man. Like he's such an amazing rapper and producer and golden voice, legendary voice. Fucking. Uh, but um, Qbert is was a god to us at a certain age. You know what I mean? There was like a time where, and Q-Tip's always been the shit. Like, but Qbert at one point was like, fucking epic. You know? I I don't I I haven't been kind of keeping up. Is he still out there doing his thing or? Yeah, he's he's yeah. still he's still going crazy. Um, you know now there's like, the new generation is wild. Like the new generation of kids that just scratch. They're, yeah. it's insane. It's in fucking insane. Like they're so good. It's incredible to see. It's like anything, you know, like skateboarding or like basketball yeah. or anything. The evolution is just wild and shit. So. Is that something that do you ever get anxiety? For? I say the anxiety because I get anxiety when I see stuff because that puts me back on to like, I'm, I'm probably fine I, with my collectors that I have. I'll be just fine. But I, right. for some reason, still get this feeling like, oh, shit. <laughs> I'm not competitive or anything. But oh, no, for that. sure. For sure. But then I'm just like, you know, I'm just like fucking it's it's um even if technically they're like miles ahead. Right. Or whatever, because they're just younger, faster, better. And yeah. it's a new generation. And the and they had they had all the greats to watch to get better from. You know what I mean? And YouTube yep. and all that, you know, but there's still like I still get down. I'm still funky. And, you know, that that funk and like that style is like that's a whole it's kind of like style versus technicality. You know what I mean? And yeah. it's like even if I'm not the most technical, I still I still party rock and have a good time with the crowd. And I got some style to it. And yeah, you have your own style. Yeah. And I love it, you know, and that and that that'll come through and, and translate. And uh, but yeah, for sure. You know, you're like, fuck, damn, these kids are fucking amazing. <laughs> What am I, I gonna uh, do? I, I need to go some, practice. Like I see it. some shit that they're doing. Like sometimes I'll just catch random people I don't even heard of, but I'll see them on TikTok and like some of the beats and shit that they're making on there. I'm just like, oh, oh yeah, the <laughs> yeah, that's insane. It's insane, you know. Um, but shit, at this point, I'm just like, fuck it. I'm approaching OG. Yeah, you know, like been in the game a long time. I'm just like, fuck it. You know, I got I got my fans and. I, I pay mad respect to the young kids, you know. I got nothing but love for all that shit because it's amazing to watch and shit. Do you ever get hit up by like uh, from younger people like saying like, "Hey, how do I get into the like?" Do you ever get any of that? Uh, yeah, how? yeah, oh, a ton cool. of ton of kids reach out, and um, I try to like um, a lot of young artists have bad approach, and yeah. it's they, they have the same approach, right? Like they're all like, "Check me out, bro!" Like or yep. like one hundred. Please listen to my shit or check this out, check this out, and then I think I try to like feel as many of the good approaches as I can. Anytime somebody comes at me authentic, not with like a copy and paste message, yeah. genuine shit, and not just looking for like, cause a lot of times I tell them like, hey man, even if I listen to your music and I love it, you know, like I can share it for you, you know, but it's like, you still have to just like do it, be active, yeah. you know, keep, I'm, nobody's gonna make or break you like that. I don't think, you know, I'm yeah, sure some a, people a, can, like Justin Bieber could share somebody shit and, yeah, no up or Ellen DeGeneres or something, but yeah, I'm just kind of like that's not the way sometimes. 
I yeah, I don't I think it I mean it's the wave one of um ten million, but like right. <laughs> it's not yeah, I sometimes feel like people I feel like people want to discover music, you know, like they don't, that's how like, artists will like say, go follow my work. Like they'll post on my page, like go follow my work. And like, why would I, right. I mean, I'm not just, I want to feel like I discovered it. Like you yeah. got to figure out a better way to, cause even yeah. if it is good, I'm going to be like, bro, don't come on my shit. And- <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. And yeah. You're not going to become a fan of it. Like through that approach for sure. Right. Um, how about DJ clue or DJ quick? Oh shit. Um, I'm gonna go with quick. Oh, word. Yeah. 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 What I always wondered because he went by went by DJ Quick. Was like was he a DJ? Well, he I'm sure he was a DJ, um, producer. Cause a lot of like I'm all about to like Google DJ Quick. Um <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, I was way into I mean, I was just I was way into DJ Quick and that West Coast, like that's yeah, like, dude. The dopest sound. He has and the I, best sound. I always wonder so West Coast, so funny. I felt like he was more rapper than than DJ. So I always wonder like Oh, right that dj part came i think from? he's a jack of all trades uh engineer producer studio guy you yeah, know what yeah. i mean so i think he knows how to do all that stuff like he's probably just good on the boards good on the turntables do you, oh, man i'm i'm i've recently i have been i've been doing these super detailed drawings like this doesn't look detailed i'm just trying to sketch out something that thing is bad taking me forever dude. but <laughs> I know I'm not going to be able to finish it already. I, these are supposed to be quick sketches, but I start getting into them. Yeah, I can tell so that cool. I'm doing that because I start getting more focused on like having my discussion with you than I'm, <laughs> right. than I'm drawing. But I get excited from like discussion with people like yourself. I can just get excited from people who make music that I love. I just, I get pumped up, but right on, this, this will yeah. be a lot better. Oh, do you, do you have any abnormal collections of anything or like, do you have any, do you collect anything? Yeah, dude. Uh, I kind of like collect a lot of shit. Uh, I collect poker chips from like, or casino chips. Oh yeah. From like every casino. I, and I'm not like a gambler like that, but I go into every casino I ever see and I take like a $1 chip or whatever. And I have those and I have like 150 or 160 of those different casinos, like from all over the world. And then uh, I have a pretty ridiculous Lego collection. That'll be good for your son. Yeah. Oh yeah. He's going to, he's going to love them in some years. Like, but I, yeah, I don't even build them anymore because he's too young. He just wants to like knock everything down and eat everything. So is it like a big, massive Lego collection that you have? Like, is it a pretty, I mean, is it, is it pretty solid? It's like, yeah, it's pretty solid. Um, me and my, me and my lady just were like going crazy buying Legos for a few years and like, and then just got to a point where like, we're like, all right, no more like, yeah, where are you gonna put them Lego all? buying, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, they were like, we had like, we have like a Christmas Lego collection that could fill like a dining table of like a little <laughs> Lego City Christmas with like a train and fucking all kinds of dumb shit going on. I don't even know where it really originated. I think just one of us randomly got a Lego set for a birthday or something. We built it. and We're like, oh, and then just another one came and another one came and like, yeah. What about you? <laughs> a garbage pill kids, he man toy. I, I I was pretty much into collecting everything. Yeah. And then I thought, well, oh, my kids will love these he man toys. And like we broke them out once, and like they they enjoyed it for like a week, and then it was like, <laughs> he was like, where's the iPad? Right back in the storage. Yeah, Pez yeah. collections. Yeah, I love collecting stuff, but I don't anymore because. I'm starting to realize like, oh shit, I can't, I don't have room for all this stuff. I'm trying to get rid of shit, man. Yeah. Like right and left. Like even I, I kind of have hoarder tendencies. If I feel like there's like value in something, I just hold on to it. Like I used to be sponsored by different like clothing brands. So I would get a ton of clothes for tour. And then I still have these clothes that are like eight years old that I don't really wear, but I'm like, no, these are like brand new. I only wore them like twice. Like why would I fucking throw this away? You know? And then. <laughs> The other day I like boxed up a ton of shit and now I'm just like, you know, I, I want to be simple, simple man. Yeah. Like, yeah, not a lot of possessions, not a lot of things and just fucking simplify. That's the word for sure. That. I got it. Yeah. Do I started, I'm, I'm, I'm back and I'm in collecting shirts now. Cause, but I, I, I'll make a reason for it. I'm like, Oh yeah. You know, I'm going to start collecting people's merch again because then I can wear it on the show. Like I'm wearing a wall one shirt. Right. Yeah. That's how, yeah. I, that's how I make an excuse for it. I'm like, Oh, yeah. I better, I better get that. Cause it'd be cool to show. I wear it on the show, on the show, on one of the episodes. That, and then I go. started collecting vinyl again, just because it's a lot cooler for yeah. me to get vinyl from these people that, you know, from people that I'm having a discussion with. Yeah. 
But I don't know. Shit. Whatever. Um. Oh. So is um Hoppa and Friends is that going to be a trilogy? Trilogy or are you going to keep? Are those? Is that going to keep happening in the future? Yeah, I think they're going to keep happening. I think it's a good way now, especially. It's a good. It's a good thing for me to reference when I approach new artists. Like, uh, I'd be like, hey, look at these projects. Look at all the people that have been on them before. Don't you want to be on the next one? You know, it'll yeah, be easier awesome. for me to land land more rappers that, like, uh, I don't personally know. Because a lot of the ones on the projects, like, they're people I've toured with or have just met personally. Like, so I have that relationship to reach out. Because I'm not really, I'm not down to, like, pay for verses or, sure. like, hire. Yeah, I'm just kind of, like, doing it to make make hip-hop and shit so have you ever had to like have you ever done the like you know paying I've, for i bought or... one one verse um when i was 19 for my first album and i don't regret it it was from a two max oh awesome i got a two max yeah. verse and uh you know this was when i would go to a hip-hop show and two max would be at the bar and like me and my homie are like yo that's fucking two max <laughs> right fucking there at the bar <laughs> And I go up to him, like, you know, little kid. I'm like, yo, Tumex, you killed it, man. You know what I mean? Like, thanks, man. I'm like, can I get your number? I make beats. And then he gave me his number. And, I, you know, I was just like, I got Tumex's number. You know, like, fucking so gassed all night. And then hit him up. And he's like, yeah, five, uh, 500 bucks, you know, for you, 400. I'm like, all right, cool. Yeah. Like, Let me sell some weed for a couple of weeks and save that money. And then I'll hit you up, you know, and then fucking. Well, yeah. yeah, so that one comes out as a good experience. Because I imagine, I'm wondering... I like the way you're doing it, you know, like with people you worked with or, or you know, or like kind of like through word of mouth or someone, because right. it seems like your experience together comes off better, you know, and, yeah. and more into it. Yeah. And then it's more, yeah, it's like, a, there's like more of a common thread if everybody kind of like actually knows each other and the music, I think it translates in the music rather than just like, I'm going to pay this rapper to get on this song. I'm going to get this guy on this song. And then it's like, it's kind of more like hodgepodge or like random, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I love that. I love I, I I'm really into the I mean, I like them both, but I'm really into the, the, the set. The last one that you the Hoppa two one or Hoppa and Friends two one. Um, I'm a big fan of Marlon Crap. I mean, I've, I've only just kind of discovered him in the last two years, but I was that was dope that you got him on there. I walked in empty shoes just to find my soul to win this pain that I've befriended be. Just to find that rappers is all like iPhone Batteries don't keep that same energy This game will try to shit on you shit on But you. I live three years ahead in my head So in my mind I've already flexed on you and forgiven you Check my location, I'm dropping pins at the pinnacle I ain't boastful, I'm literal Crap. And then I wanted to ask you that piano riff in the one that uh, the song with Greaves yeah was his contribution just his vocals or cause that that piano riff sounds yeah. like grief is very grieve style during the hook right yeah 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 that's grieves he he oh, did yeah. that yeah. yeah he threw that piano he's like hey i added this little piano line for the hook yeah and i was like love it man you ain't gotta love me baby that's fine hey. that's fine that's fine i'ma have the juice until i flat line hey. Flat line, flat line. Hey, you ain't gotta love me, baby. That's fine. Hey, anywhere that you go. Uh, so I, that what made, made me wonder when I was listening to the the album. I was thinking, when you're picking out, you know, what rappers are gonna be on there. Do you have them in mind when you're making the beat, or do you make a beat and then you're starting to feel like, oh, okay, I think so and so will sound good on that. I knew I wanted to get Vel on that kind of beat. Right. Um, like I knew, like I was like, I just want to do some real simple jazzy stuff because she's got such a cool voice, and um, I just wanted it to be like on some smooth shit. She she has a lot of like hard hip hop beats, you know. So I was like, I, I want to give her like something real smooth and jazzy, and so I got her part first, and then um, and then it was kind of like incomplete. I'm like, okay, I got this dope verse. Who could tie this together? And I know Greaves is really good at just like songwriting in general, making full songs, you know? So I sent it to him and I don't think he had heard her before. And he was like, yo, this is dope. This girl's dope, you know? And I think got it, he got inspired to do something different. And it's cool because it like, I think it knocks everybody out of their element a little bit. Yeah. Greaves definitely tied that together. Yeah, his, his uh, the piano, that hook kind of what made it feel very Greaves. Yeah. But then AWOL, the track that you have with AWOL 1 on there is a very AWOL 1 kind of track. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> AWOL 1, DJ Hopper. I drink beer from a mug from a human skull. Take my armor and jump in the pool. I woke up not feeling like I woke up. Time to grow up. Don't swim around and throw up. Yeah.
Never served a king, that saddens me. I won't call no human your majesty. Yeah, so I was wondering if that was how that how you were doing those those tracks, but I guess you you produce them prior before you know who's gonna be on there. While I'm making it, like, yeah, it'll just kind of like when I sit down to make a beat, I don't really know what the hell I'm gonna make. I don't know what's gonna come out. Um, but once it starts taking shape, I'm like, yeah, like the A Wall one, I knew like A Wall would sound great on this. You know, like that was for him for sure. Is there a rapper out there or something that you you think you could make a banger with? Yeah, there's a few artists. Um, you know, I want to do more music with, like, the Pro Era crew, um, with, uh, there's an artist, IDK, he's gotten so big, though, like, when I was first talking to him about doing some songs, he had just dropped, like, this project, and he was, like, his, his career has gone from, like, here to here since I had talked to him about doing songs, so I'm pretty sure now it's just, like, sorry, bro, I can't do it, you know, once an artist gets at a certain level, it's, like, it's just bad business for them to release. Sure anything you know until like their their whole structured marketing there's so much money behind it that kind of stuff would give me anxiety i i always feel like i'm gonna miss some sort of boat some way or another. Oh, man. yeah it's all about this journey man i'm just like fuck it you know like trust the process that's like you know you work hard man you do your thing it's like just trust the process that's what i have to tell myself or else i'll go i'll go nuts you know like yeah, yeah comparing or thinking about what other people are doing i'm like fuck it i'm here yeah. i'm working how can I that's be upset? A, you know, that's yeah. a major life. Like that's something really difficult to 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 reach a level of being able to just go like I can't let that. I that shit's just noise. I got to keep that aside or the right. Because you will drive yourself nuts. And yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then and then yeah, and then it's like, what are you doing it for? You know what I mean? Yeah. If you're like, you're not even enjoying the time of yeah. So it's like, yeah. but I definitely have gone through like man, all that shit, and continue to go through different emotions uh, that are involved with just doing this shit independent, like doing things yourself you know jam master j or j dilla oh fuck um <laughs> man rest in peace uh uh dilla man uh jam master j is a pioneer fucking legend um dilla's impact in in beats and swing and and giving giving drum machines crazy soul and life is like just crazy you know yeah. so personally yeah dilla for sure rjd2 or r2d2 <laughs> rjd2 all day um yeah rjd2 hands down he's he's fucking a legend yeah i was definitely collecting a lot of rjd2 vinyl um anytime i saw his name i was grabbing the vinyl he weaves samples together like a genius mastermind yeah that 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 sophie's choice is for like a producer but then also a really hardcore like star wars fan but yeah yeah <laughs> i love star wars but i mean like for sure rj takes the cake you know like yeah high row or bliss and esso uh shout outs to bliss and esso those are those are the homies my first vinyl my first major placement was through bliss and esso um but high row all day. yeah yeah well, so that was there that was your first vinyl yeah, so like um I was on a website called illmusic.com with a Z and a K, like M U Z I K. Illmusic.com where hip hop producers meet, you know, like and uh this is like probably 99 or 2000 or sometime around then, maybe 2001 and um it was just a forum and it was like a forum for beat makers and they just talk about making beats on, you know, whatever programs and there was like uh, little competitions and little like showcases and that's really where I had a community that's like where I first was able to talk to other people that make beats you know what I mean because yeah. like even like even going to shows in LA it wasn't easy to just be like hey where's all the people that make beats like where you know what I mean like <laughs> talk to me hang out with me you know it's yeah. like they don't want to hang out with like me at that time um so like I was on that website and Bliss and Esso had a, a homie named Nug who passed away, rest in peace to Nug. And he um, he liked my beats and he was just like, hey, I'm in Australia. Like, I was like, well, that's so cool. He's like, I work with this hip hop group called Bliss and Esso. Can we buy this beat from you? And I was like, yeah, $300, you know, like for sure it's yours. And they paid me 300. <laughs> they got the exclusive rights to it. You know what I mean? Like they pressed it to vinyl. It became like the lead single. They went on tour with like 50 cent that year. And they were performing it on major stages. And I was like blown away because uh, I was just happy to get 300 bucks, dude. Yeah, you know what I mean? But <laughs> down the line, I'm like, sh I sh really should have got my publishing and shit. Like, I, I kind of fucked up on that one. But um, who's getting a hop of beat right now and publishing rights for 300 bucks? <laughs> yeah, no, not happening. Not not in 2021, man. No way. <laughs> well, what about Fat Lip or Fat Boy Slim? 
Oh, oh man. Um, Fatboy Slim's dope as fuck, but Fat Lip for sure. Yeah, yeah. you're gonna roll that way. What about yeah. De La Soul or Souls of Mischief? Ah, oh, shit. I'm gonna go Souls of Mischief. It's like it's. I'm not. I'm just firing it back. But um, that's not easy. De La Soul is is the shit. You know, they were doing the hippie shit, and uh, and just fucking were so fun. Souls of Mischief were just more of like my my era you know like yeah mac miller or mac lethal mac miller mac lethal's dope as fuck and yeah i actually i have a song where mac lethal does a hook on it oh what? Uh, yeah what? with uh it's not my song but Sess crew there's a Sess crew song featuring mac lethal that i produced oh awesome but i'm gonna go with mac miller okay yeah shout out to mac lethal though for sure dj jazzy joyce or dj jazzy jeff DJ Jazzy Jeff. All right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, yeah, man. I, I fucking, I knew I wasn't gonna be able to get this thing done. It's gonna. This will. Dude, it's this, awesome. I just clicked over be, to this thing. It's like, dude. It'll be way better than this. But uh, before I let you go, let me ask you, what's in the future for yourself? What can we promote? What do we? Uh, where do we go from here? Yeah. Thank you for that opportunity. Yeah, um, I got albums coming for everybody that's into the music i got a project with demrick called uh, stony point three we got two stony points out already and then uh me and gavlin are dropping our third album and that's called say less love more which we haven't announced yet so you get in the yeah the early announcement of the <laughs> of the title yeah and we're dropping singles every week on broken complex and yeah I want to reach out to Gavlin too because I want to have her on here. I like, I, I really dig her vocals. I'd love to draw something for her. So I'm yeah, gonna... she's got, she's, she's great. I'll let her know. I'm going to see her today. So I'll, I'll yeah, let, let her know. know. I'm going to be reaching and, out to her for sure. Um, here's, there's the big question. I, I, I'm starting to end these with a big question. Okay. Here's the big question. Will humans be overrun by AI? Oh shit. You know, I just been watching the matrix the other day and uh, all this other shit. Um, Yes, humans will definitely be overrun by AI. I mean, in all kinds of different fucking capacities or whatever, you know? It's already happening, you know what I mean? Like, the AI is already smarter than humans. I don't remember who I was hearing talk about it, but someone said it. I can't remember who, but they were saying, the way algorithms work, algorithms are going to realize that humans, we're, we're detrimental to this whole system. Like, we're right. useless. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and so they will, the algorithms will easily figure out if they need we need to make everything perfect. The first thing they need to eliminate are the fucking Yeah, perfect. we're the yeah, exactly. We're the non-perfect exactly. <laughs> I hope it doesn't happen. I don't I, I'm an optimist, so I don't see it happening, but it could happen. Oh yeah. <laughs> um all your merch and everything is that from the broken complex website? Yes. Yeah, it's all at brokencomplex.com and um yeah, you could follow me at DJ Hoppa on all the networks. You could check out my, I have two posts on my TikTok account. Uh, you could check out. <laughs> First one's really adorable though. You're standing on there. <laughs> yeah. And then and, upcoming uh, album or upcoming tour information. Yeah, I'm going to be on the full capacity tour with uh, Dizzy Wright, Chris Webby, and Futuristic. And I have more tours that will be announced uh, after that tour gets wrapped up. So I'll be on the road for the rest of the year. And yo, everybody out there that's at, uh, at a show that's catching uh, DJ Hoppa at the show, just remember he's uh, provided music for y'all. Uh, you know, he's sacrificing time away from his son so <laughs> and his family. So uh, yeah. yeah, make sure you uh, show respect while you're at the shows. At the website is the best place you like um, for people to purchase music, tracks. Yeah, all you of can. That. You could you could book a studio session off the website. You can grab you can grab any of the albums. You can get links to to all the streaming networks. All the projects are on there. Um, BrokenComplex.com is like the main hub for for that and all the artists: Marley B, Gavlin, myself, Johnny Slash. Um, so yeah, check it out. No man, it was a real pleasure having you on the show. I really, I, I, it's never lost on me the fact that like you you have a business, you have a life, you have things you need to do. So. Like just taking the time out to, to to sit with me for me to draw you a picture, man. I, I'm I'm incredibly grateful to you. For I appreciate that. you taking the time, man. Thank you so much for having me. You and your wife, Adrian. Nice meeting you. Yeah, thank no, you, guys. Word, brother. Thanks, Ahapa. I really appreciate it, man. It was an honor thank talking you. with you. Awesome. Thank Cheers. you. Cheers. Have a good rest of your day. DJ Hopper. Yeah. Yeah. Damn. Damn. 
Yes, yes, yes. Hoppa, thank you again for joining me on DOD 45. It was a true pleasure shooting the shit with you. I really look forward to uh, Hoppa and Friends Part Trey release, hopefully sooner than later. And I always look forward to any music you're dropping, so keep them coming. Head over to brokencomplex.com to check out Hoppa's music and merch or to any of his social media platforms to keep informed. You've watched or listened to this episode, so now you have no excuse to not be partaking of Hoppa's music from here on out. If you'd like to find out more about me and my art, head over to artbytai.com. That's art by T-A-I. And if you haven't figured it out yet, I've given up on trying to get you to join me on my Twitter. What the hell is Twitter anyway? It means nothing to me. It's dumb. It's irrelevant. It's... Wait, what? Wait. (laughs) What? I don't know what just happened to me right there. (laughs) At Art by Ty on Twitter. Check me there. But y'all know me. I'm mostly an IG poster. As always, you can find all the links and necessary information in the links below. That's it for now. Thanks for joining us. Cheers. Bad thoughts in my head that take place in my bed And I don't have to lie, but I do that instead Things that need to be said poison in my brain like that Thanks for watching this episode of DOD 45. I hope that you enjoyed yourself. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. I don't want you to ever miss an episode. Also stick around my YouTube page for a bit. There's a whole array of videos to enjoy, including time-lapse videos, drawing tutorials, and live streams. It's like an amusement park. Now click that subscribe button and go watch another episode of DOD 45. Cheers.